turn your Bibles to the book of, the book of Psalms, 106, where we're going to read some from this morning, uh, starting with verse 1. Psalm 106, verse 1. I say it's good to be back in the house of the Lord this morning, and I hope that we can all receive a blessing, and I, I know if we try and listen, we can re receive a blessing from God's Word. Uh, I like to say that uh, God's Word is true. Amen. And, uh, what Junior Page said may not be uh, true, but the thing of it is I try to keep everything as much as I can true, but God's Word is true. Amen. So this morning we ask the Lord to bless uh, the study this morning as we read His Word. In verse 1 of Psalms 106, Praise ye the Lord, O give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. Amen. Who can utter the mighty acts of the Lord? Who can show forth all his praise? Blessed are they that keep judgment, and he that doeth righteousness at all times. Remember me, O Lord, with the favor that thou bearest unto the people. O visit me with thy salvation that I may see the good of thy chosen, that I may rejoice in the gladness of thy, of the, thy nation, that I may glory with thine inheritance. We have sinned right. with our fathers, we have committed iniquity, and we have done wickedly. And he goes on to talk about the little trip that come when they took, well, come out of Egypt, and we'll get into that a little bit later. But uh, he, he says here, we have sinned. And with that, we need to uh, think upon what verse 1 says. And the first word it says, it says praise. Amen. And that this morning is what uh, we fall so short in. So many times is praising the Lord. We, we uh, give thanks and praise to a lot of things, but uh, the Lord is the one that we need to give praise. And praise Him. He says, praise ye the Lord. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. And uh, this morning, that's that's where that I feel like that we all so fail short so much in a lot of times we'll say thank you Lord thank you Lord but the thing of it is our hearts somewhere else and right. uh, we uh, a lot of times uh, uh, are in a habit of saying praise the Lord or thank the Lord and a lot of times uh, it don't mean what it says and so we need to really be concerned about ourselves and how that we praise the Lord and that we be more sincere about it and know what we're talking about when we say praise the Lord because he 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 wants us to praise him and Amen. Uh, he don't want us to do it by habit by just the uh, thing of opening our mouth and saying something so we see here praise ye the Lord oh give thanks unto the Lord for he is good and his mercy endureth forever I want to if you would uh, turn with me to first chronicles for just a minute in first chronicles 16 we want to read a, a few scriptures here verse 34 in chronicles 16 34 uh and we we see that uh, he says about some of the same things that he did there uh the writer does in as in psalm but in verse 34 of first chronicles 16 he says oh give thanks unto the lord for he is good amen so that's a standard thing that the, uh, the Old Testament says it uh, throughout. I mean, there's several places there, and uh, they meant it. So, uh, and they've seen things uh, more from the natural eye than we do by faith. And they've seen a lot of things, and, and, uh, uh, and they, could, they meant it more, I believe, than a lot of times what we do. But anyway, oh, give thanks unto the Lord for his good, for his mercy endure forever. And it says, and say, Ye save us, O God, of our salvation. Give and gather us together, deliver us from the heathens, that we may give thanks to thy holy name and glory in thy praise. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel forever and ever. And all the people said, Amen. Amen. And praise the Lord. So this morning when he when he here in the Chronicles, when he was writing here, he says, uh, here that we may uh, uh, that we gather us together and deliver us from the heathens. And uh, we, you know, you say, well, they had a rough time. Well, they didn't have a rougher time than we do. Uh, there is heathens out there right now. Amen. And, you know, 
uh, our president is strictly against it. ISIS, for he's saying, hey, we're going to destroy them. Amen. ISIS and it is, is one that believes it's all right for us, for them to kill those that worship God. They uh, they don't worship God. They worship uh, another, uh, I can't think of what to call him, but anyway, they, they worship him and they don't worship God. And uh, they're, they are uh, they're terrible people. And uh, of course, we know that from the things that they've done, the killings and all they've done. But anyway, he's saying here, give us deliverance from these things. And this is another thing I want to encourage all of us. And I've said it time and time again. We need to pray for our country. Amen. We need to pray for the leaders that they might all get together and, and, uh, and be a help to this nation. And help us from, be delivered from these things that are taking place. Because now it's not safe to go anywhere. It's not safe to... To even go into your own house, but right. here he says, "Here deliver us from the heathen, that we may give thanks to the holy name and glory in Thy praise. Blessed be the God, the Lord God of Israel, forever and ever." And all the people said, "Amen." And praise the Lord. So back in our lesson here in Psalms 106, he says <clears throat> in verse two of 106, "Who can utter the mighty acts of the Lord? Who can show forth?" all his praises now we want to see here this morning that he's asking the question who can utter the mighty acts of the god there's no one that can that can utter them that no one can perform them a lot of people want to think that they can and uh, they think that they can do about anything but listen god is on the throne god is the one that does these things and and god is the one that utters these words and he's he, he is our leader, he is our guide, and we need to, we need to be in contact with him. Uh, he's always there, he's ready to hear our prayers, and that's the way that we can, we can understand what he would have us to do. He might ask him for these things, and he'll speak to us through the Holy Spirit. And that's how he utters his voice to us, is through the Holy Spirit this morning. And so, again, we need to listen and pay attention and praise the Lord. Blessed, in verse 3, blessed are they that keep judgments... And this judgment is the ability to, to determine between right and wrong. And a lot of people, a lot of people this day and time can't determine wrong from right. Right. And uh, if, if that was, if it, if it wasn't that way, we wouldn't have these false religions saying, "Hey, you do this, you can be saved. You do that, you can be saved." You do. They don't understand the right way, and they have the wrong judgment. So he said, "Blessed are they that keep judgments, and he that doeth righteous." At all times. So we're blessed this morning when we keep sound judgments, when we feast off of this, when we pray to God, when the Holy Spirit talks to our hearts, we can receive this correct judgment or that we can identify right from wrong. We can listen to the Holy Spirit and He will guide us into all ways and, and lead us for that we can we can be in the will of the Lord. So here we see uh, he goes on and says, uh, remember me, O Lord, with the favors that thou bearest unto thy people. Now, if you would, uh, with me just a minute, turn to Psalms 15. I want to read a scripture here in 15 more. <clears throat> uh, it says, uh, Psalms 15 and verse 1. It says, Lord, who shall abide in thy tabernacle? Who shall dwell in thy holy hill? He that walketh uprightly, and worketh righteousness, and speaketh the truth in his heart. Now, we're talking about this judgment, and this is, this is identifying this judgment. He says, He that backbiteth not with his tongue, nor doeth evil to his neighbor, nor taketh up a reproach against his neighbor, in whose eyes a vile person is contempt, contempt but he honoreth them that fear the Lord, he that sweareth to his own hurt and changeth not. But he that putteth not out his money to ulcery, nor taketh reward against the innocent. He that doeth these things shall never be moved. Amen. And so, there's so much here in this, uh, about this, but I, I, wanted you, I wanted you to hear this because even, even here, and I, and I was reading this and studying this, this ulcery, is is charging someone money for to, to use your money and here he says he that putteth forth out of his mouth out of his money to usury nor taketh rewards against the innocent 
He, he that doeth these things shall never be moved. And so, uh, you know, we, 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 can, we have things that we need to uh, think about in this and uh, uh, all of this all these backbiting and all of the tongue, letting the tongue run and all this. Listen, it's not what God wants. And that, I believe, is what he's talking about in, oh, back in our lesson in verse uh, 3 when he says, Blessed are they that keep judgments. And so we need this morning to uh, bridle our tongue, as James said, I believe. Amen. Is, and bridle our tongue and uh, uh, don't let our uh, uh, lips get in gear before our mind does. And keep these things back because it's better to keep them, keep them silent than to say it. And Amen. so here, here we go, verse 4, Remember me, O Lord, with the favor that thou bearest unto thy people. The visit, O visit me with thy salvation, that I may see the good of thy chosen, that I may rejoice in the gladness of thy nation, that I may glory with thy inheritance. Now these is the things that the psalmist was asking, Remember me, O Lord, Remember me when I see the good of thy chosen. Now, God chose us that are saved. He chose us before the before e eternity. Amen. Now listen, if he chose us, we're going to stay chose. We're his. And David is saying here that I may see the good of thy chosen. And we this morning should be able to put off some of that goodness that he's talking about, that he sees out of his uh, God's people. And that is one of the things this morning that we need to try our best to do, is that is to walk in an upright way. And, and like I said about these lips, listen, uh, one little word uh, in the wrong place, uh, you can't get it. You can't. Re you can't get it to return back. And I heard the the thing about the the toothpaste. You know, uh, you can squirt a, a toothpaste out, of it, but you can't get it back in. Right. It's the same way with your mouth opening up and spurting out words and things like that. And then maybe you don't. You know, you, you don't. You don't have it. But the thing of it is, then the Holy Spirit says, well, "Hey, you shouldn't have said that." Well, you go back to the person and say, "I'm sorry," and he's supposed to forgive you. But the thing of it is, you know, a lot of times you, we don't forget those things. Right. And uh, uh, the devil knows how to use those things on you. And uh, you might see the person five years later and that, the devil point that little thing to you and say, hey, you remember what he said about you? So here's the thing of it is, uh, we just need to be careful what we say, what we do, and how we act. And so he says uh, there that I may see the good of thy chosen, that I may rejoice in the gladness of thy nation, that I may glory with thine inheritance. And speaking of nations, I think this morning that that's one thing that our nation is missing terribly. They have dishonored God. They're not. They're not honoring Him like they should. And I, I think if we honor, if our nation honored Him more, that other nations would look at Him and see see what's going on. Just like David said, that I need to see the, the honor that you know those that that you have blessed, I want to see what they're doing. And I think other nations would be the same way with us if, and maybe uh, things will get better. We could have a great reviving. There, there could be a great reviving. Right. And the Lord might come in and bless and the other countries might see and kind of do something different. But anyway, all we can do is pray and ask the Lord to bless us. Now, he says <clears throat> in verse six, we have sinned. With our fathers, we have committed iniquities, we have done wickedly, our fathers understood not thy wonders in Egypt, they remembered not the multitude of thy mercies, but provoked him at the sea, even the Red Sea. Now, right. when you think about, uh, and, and we get back, and I uh, studied over in Exodus, uh, I believe it's Exodus 14, but when they when they got when they got to even to the Red Sea, uh, hey, they had before told Moses, hey, we we brother we do stay here in Egypt, or had eleven brothers stay in Egypt. Of course, we could sit down to the melons and the, and all this and eat. But but you know, God uh, it, it provoked God because listen, these people did not appreciate uh, even after they come across, got across the sea. They, as they started across, 
God sent the angels to direct the cloud behind them where that the uh, sun shined on them and the Egyptians couldn't see because of the darkness. Now listen, he did it the same way down in, down in Egypt. The night that the, uh, the Passover happened, the great darkness there was so dark, he said that they couldn't feel it. These things that, that he did for them, they didn't appreciate. Right. And they, they went across the Red Sea, dry shod, went on over, and it wasn't but just a short time till there they were uh, hollering and screaming and carrying on for something to drink and something to eat. And he sent them the manna, they still belly ate. He sent them the quail, they stood up and eat and eat and eat till they run out their nose, it says. And they still grumbled. And so here's what David is saying. We have sinned. Mm -hmm. Now we, as a church, and I'm not pointing no, uh, saying anything, but we sin also. Right. We commit sin because there's none of us that's perfect. So we, we can say, I can say for myself that I have sinned. And here's his, here's his thing. He says, uh, never the, uh, he, wants, he, wants, he wants the mercies of God. And this is why he's saying, praise the Lord. But he's saying here, we have sinned with our fathers. We have committed iniquities. We have done wickedly. Our fathers understood not thy wonders in Egypt. And they didn't understand. Uh, even when they put, sent them down to Kosha, they didn't understand. But he says, they remembered not the multitude of thy, thy mercies, but provoked him at the sea risk. Nevertheless, he saved them for his name's sake. Right. And it, it applies to us people. He saved us that are saved here this morning. And we were in our sins, but he still saved us. And yet, so many times, we don't serve him like we should. We, don't, we just do not uh, obey him and we don't yeah. love him like we should because we have this problem with the flesh. Right. But here, this is why he's saying this. And so he says, uh, he, uh, in, all, in verse uh, uh, 9, he says, he rebuked the Red Sea. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm going to read that. In verse 10, and he saved them from the hand of him that hated them and redeemed them from the hand of the enemy. And the waters covered their enemies. There was not one of them left. And so we see here what happened at the Red Sea. David is calling into remembrance these <coughs> things that happened there. And he is saying all of this because there is a lack, a lack, a lack of praise to God. Amen. There is a lack of, there is a necessity, I'll put it that way, for us to do more praying than what we do. Amen. And more sincere praying than what we do. And uh, we, I know we have, we have a busy time and life gets busy, but listen, we still need to make time to serve the Lord. We need to serve. Amen. We can stay up if we can stay up of a night and watch television. We can stay up and read the Bible. Amen. Uh, if we can, we need to, we need to study God's Word. Uh, you don't have to have a Sunday school class to study God's Word. Amen. You don't even have to be a preacher to study God's Word. You just need to study God's Word. And so David, uh, again, praise the Lord. So he said uh, here, they, in verse 13, after they had, and verse 12 says, they then believed they his word, then they sang his praise. They, they soon forgot his works. They waited not for his counsel, but lusted exceedingly in the wilderness and tempted God in the desert. Right. First, uh, if you would, if I can get over there to it, 1 Corinthians, I've got a scripture I'd like to read to you, 1 Corinthians 10. First Corinthians 10, 1. 1 Corinthians 10, verse 1. Moreover, brethren, I would not that ye should be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea. Now he's saying they were under the cloud. They were under God's protection. 
there at the Red Sea because the cloud kept the Egyptians from coming in and killing them. They couldn't see them. But Israel, the, 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 they said the wind blew all night long and th that next morning the, the, the path was there and they went across. Now, here he's saying this and he's, he, uh, uh, Paul is t telling these people, he says, and they all passed through the sea and were all baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea. And it's uh, not uh, the baptism that the uh, that uh, Church Christ talked about, you know. Or, but anyway, this this uh, and uh, the in uh, in verse three, and did all eat the same spiritual meat? That was the the uh, quail and all of that, and they did drink the same spiritual drink. And that's where Moses messed up, and he he, he smoked the stone the first time, and the water come out. Then God told him, said, you go speak to the rock, Moses. And Moses hit the rock twice. And why did he do it? Because he was aggravated with the people. They had griped and grumbled and all that and got Moses into trouble. And Moses didn't get to see the promise of him. For right. But here he says, they did all drink the same spiritual drink for they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them and that rock was Christ. But with many of them, God was not well pleased, for they were, were overthrown in the wilderness. Now these things were our example. And that is saying a whole lot when you say an example. We, we need to follow that example. We need to uh, pay attention to God's word because a lot of it is, is, is for our good. It, it's all for our good. But listen, that example there got them all in trouble. Listen, they all died from the age of 20 and, and up. Uh, 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 from, yeah, from 20 and up. And, and listen, there was just a young group of people left there because of all of this murmuring, because of all of this griping, because of all this complaining. And uh, they even tried to kill Moses. Uh, and you know, Korah and them was, 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 gonna, was gonna try to take him over. And, uh, and God opened up the earth and took them. Man. So listen, you see the, you see the the track here that they led through the wilderness and all of this, and God, God would give them a light to go by and, and a cloud to, to shadow them by, and He protected them. And, and you, you know, He says that uh, that these people were the, uh, the eye, uh, apple of His eye. That he loved these people. He still loves them. Amen. And they still don't believe in Him. They still disobey Him. They still do not believe that Jesus Christ was the Son of God. Right. But one day, one day when Jesus comes back, they will accept him and they will believe. And so people, it's, it's, it's a, it's, it's, this is a serious thing. He says, uh, neither, he says, verse six again, now these things were our example to the intent we should not lust after evil things as they also lusted, neither to be idolaters as some of them were, or some of them, as it is written, the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. Neither let us commit fornication as some of them committed and fell in one day three and twenty thousand. They they got to worship in that that golden keg or that idol. It's a, it was a it was an idol worshiper, and they and it, it killed he killed uh, 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 three. Uh, I think then I let's see what I say it was. Uh, three and twenty thousand. Neither let us tempt Christ as some of them also tempted and were des destroyed of the serpents. So you and you that study the Bible and remember this, you remember all of these things about this, these things that God did. And uh, the, the the cure for the serpents was to hang a serpent up on the on a, a <coughs> stick or a cross or, and, and 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 look upon it. And so these are some of the things that happened to these people. For 40 years. Right. And the study, and I, I studied some on it. Uh, if he had wanted to, he could have let them run around for by the, where the Philistines were, and they would have got there in 30 days. But the thing of it was, he, 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 he routed them another way on account of these Philistines. But anyway, it took them 40 years to get there. And so these are some of the things that David is... is uh, thinking about in the back of his head, and 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 this is the uh, the 
thing that he wants us to do and the thing that he was thinking about. And David was always thinking about doing these things, and that is praising the Lord. So here uh, in verse 10, I'm going to read this to you. Neither murmur ye, as some of them also murmured and were destroyed of the destroyer. Now all these things happen unto them for examples, and they are written for our admonition or our warning upon whom the ends of the world are come. There, wherefore, let him that thinketh he standeth take heed lest he fall. Right. So, good warning. A good warning. Take heed. Take heed to yourself. And if you think you're really in, uh, right up there with God and you're just really bubbling him over, you take heed. Because, listen, uh, if you do a little searching, soul searching, you'll know, you'll see that you need to praise the Lord. Right. This morning. So that's our lesson this morning. We hope that, uh, I hope that something that we read uh, will will uh, get you to thinking about something else and touch you, uh, get you a little bit closer to the Lord.